Okay, this is just another little devlog update on the game I'm working on, which was in the previous devlog if you've seen it. I've changed the name from Risk of Roblox to Paths of Peril and changed up the logo slightly as some of you recommended to avoid using the name Roblox and the logo in the game since it apparently goes against the terms of service. So I went and checked and you were right. For some reason, Roblox doesn't like it if you use their name, logo, or even the word box in the title or logo of your game. So I've removed it just in case, and now we have a more epic name, Paths of Peril. I've added a few extra things in the background, such as the Illumina Sword, some points, and you can also see Telamon back there. He'll be one of the playable characters in the game. My plan with Telmon is to make him some sort of like wizard class, so shooting fireballs, summoning lightning, that kind of stuff. I've scripted almost the entirety of the main menu at this point. Almost everything is completed except for a few sections in the logbook and teleporting in players to the next place when they want to start the game and just some other minor stuff. But I'll go ahead and play test the game for you and show you what's done so far. I've added a basic loading screen that'll disappear once the game is finished loading. And we're back in the main menu area. I've added a little settings panel just for adjusting some volume. So if players don't want to listen to music, they can just turn that slider all the way down and mute all the music. And then this volume slider is just going to be for other random sound effects that are in the menu. I also added some sounds when you hover over a button, if you can hear it. And then inside of the logbook section, I added some of the items that I'm planning to place in the game and gave some stats about them. These are just basically copies from Risk of Rain 2 with the same stats, but I just rebranded them into Roblox. So it's all different Roblox gear, like the cheeseburger or the gravity coils, just Roblox clones of stuff already in the catalog. The other sections I have to go ahead and fill out are these other ones here, but I've also added these buttons to move through the different categories and subcategories, just like in Risk of Rain 2. The single player button goes into the basement of the headquarters and I've gotten two surface GUIs here. One's for character selection and then this side's going to be for difficulty and stuff like that. I've added some GUIs that follow your mouse when you hover over certain buttons so you can read more information like information on the difficulties. And then I've just added a simple test character for now. This is technically supposed to be Talmon. Here I'll put uh, an overview description just like in the regular game. There's stats for his skills. Right now, this is just all example. And then his loadout. So he'll have different primary, secondary, utility, and special skills. Right now, these are all just examples. I'll fill it out later when I figure out what skills I actually want him to have. And we can go back and check out the multiplayer section as well. So it'll go back to the basement and you can go ahead and create a server. If there's any other servers currently in the game, they'll show up in here and you can join them. But you can hit create server you can determine the size that you want for your server if you want to have a password, whatever, and then you can create it. And you'll be in the server menu. It'll notify you when it has created the server. And then there's a section here in the bottom left that will show all of the players that are in your server. You'll be able to kick them. If you want to delete the server, you can. Or if you're ready to start the server and everyone in your game is ready, you can hit this button. But if you want to delete it, you can just go ahead and hit delete. Server's gone and you'll be back to the server menu. So for example here, if I have my player right here, create a server, let's say he puts a password on it of ABC, he'll create that server and it'll show up on the other player's screen. They can hit the join button and it'll notify them that the server's password protected. So we got to input a password. If we put in the wrong password and we hit submit, we're going to be told, oh, incorrect password. But if we put in ABC and we submit, boom, now we're in the server. And then the owner of the server right here gets to see that player in the list. And if they want to kick them, they can hit kick. And I was kicked from the server, but I can join back and input the password. And then if my owner decides to delete the server, it'll also boot out the other players and it'll notify them that they were kicked and there's no more servers left. So this time I now have created a server script or a module script that's acting as a service. And this is specifically for setting up servers and handling that kind of stuff. So inside of here, I'm listening to a remote function. A client will give me a specific action to do. The server will check if that specific action exists within this table right here. And if it does, it'll execute the related function and pass whatever information the client gave us. And then each of these functions will do their own little sanity checks. So for example, 
if a player wants to join a server, first we need to verify that the information coming from the client is actually correct. If it isn't, we'll just tell them that they passed incorrect data. This is likely an exploiter trying to mess with our remote function. And then we'll check if the player's already in a server, if they're already an owner of the server, if the server is full or if the server has already started. And then if it has a password, we need to tell the player that, hey, you need to open up the password panel and you need to enter a password. And then if they submit the wrong password, we'll tell them it was incorrect. Otherwise, we can go ahead and add the player to the server. And this server is basically an object from a class. So inside of my server service, I have a server class. And this goes and creates new server objects. So you'll pass an owner of the server and some related settings for the server. Now, since the clients can request to grab all of the current servers, so let's say a player joins the game and when they first join the game, they need to grab all of the servers that already exist and place it inside of that server list GUI. So that way they're up to date with whatever servers are in the game. So we need to return to them all of the different server objects that store information of like, what's the owner of the server, how many players are in it, what's the size of the server, that kind of stuff. But I don't want to give the players the ability to see the password for the server, specifically exploiters. So I store the password in a private table inside of my server class. So the whole purpose of this private data table is just to store the passwords for the server. And I'm using the server itself, the object as the key inside of my table. So that way, if I need to check, let me go ahead and find the function. Yeah, compare. If I need to compare a password, I'll just grab it from that table, check the password and see if it's equal to whatever password was passed to the function and return true or false. If I need to remove a player from the server, I'll do so. And then I'll notify all of the players to update the player count for that particular server, update the player list specifically for the owner. So that little panel that shows all the players in the server for an owner will update that list as well. And then I'm communicating this with a unique ID for each one of these servers. So I'm using the HTTP service to generate a GUID. So it's a unique ID for every single server. That way I can differentiate between different servers. And that's why I also have a function to grab a server object by its ID. As for the structuring on the client, it's still the same as I showed in the last dev log. I have a section here that handles some other GUIs. So for like my notification GUI, I have a module script solely for handling that. For the surface GUIs that handle like character selection and the difficulty, that's what this module handles. And then this module right here handles all of the main GUI stuff. Now I need to share different functions and features between these three different module scripts. So inside of my modules folder, this is where I have these different module scripts where I'm able to share between these different module scripts that handle the GUIs. So for all the buttons in my GUIs, I use my own custom GUI button class. So that way it's a lot easier for me to expand on the functionality without having to script each button individually. I can just go through and create an object for each button. And then each one of those objects can have settings tweaked and you can listen to different events like when the button's selected or deselected or when it's activated. I can make the button in a debounce mode so that way if the player clicks it, it won't do anything. It just gives me a whole bunch of options to do whatever I want with my buttons. And that way I don't have to script every single button in my GUI by itself. I just use this one class. And then I do the same thing for the sliders as well. So those sliders you saw in the settings, I'm using this class to set them up. This class is actually very simple. It'll take the frame, which is the sliding frame. And then we just go through, listen to different events, like when you hold down the mouse button and then when the input for the mouse button releases, because the mouse button one up for a frame button can sometimes be unreliable. So I like to use the user input service instead. And then when my object gets destroyed, so let's say for some reason I need to destroy a slider, that I'm storing all these connections inside of a trove. This is a module made by Slightnik. And that way, when I do go to destroy my slider, I clean up those troves and I disconnect those connections so that way I don't have any memory leaks going on. So yeah, I'm nearly complete with the main menu. I just got to script a few more things. I'll probably get that done within the next week or two. 
And then after that, it's on to script the other place in my game, which is going to be for loading maps, randomly generating loot, spawning in monsters and having all the players go in there and fight against them and teleporting between different maps. So that's going to be pretty fun. Can't wait for that. But I got to finish up this main menu section and then I'll be ready to script that next section. So thanks for watching this devlog and I'll see you next time.